Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So, in today's video, today's video is gonna be a little bit different to what videos I normally do in the past. Basically, look, I've been absolutely chockers, like super, super busy building this new fish room. It's taking a lot of time. And to be frank, I've had no time to work on YouTube, so I've just been making a lot of little videos to keep you guys informed in what I'm doing and updated. And basically, look, I've made a fish room tour. I've made a corridor room tour. I'm kind of running out of fish room tours to do at the moment because you guys know everything that I've got. But I've picked up some black rams and basically I've bred them. And I'm going to tell you guys a bit of a story today. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I left my camera actually at the facility, so I'm using my iPhone to do this. So all you guys who do YouTube, you know, you don't need crazy cameras, you just need your iPhone to make videos. But yeah, look, bear with me. I'll tell you a story about why I bred them, how I bred them, because um, it's quite interesting. There's a few reasons why I've done this, and it was almost like an emergency spawn. So, you know, sit back, relax, and enjoy my story. Okay, so basically this story, it all starts with, I'm going through Facebook. You know, I've joined most of the groups that are aquarium groups, and I'm just going through Facebook, I don't even know when it was, maybe I was having my coffee in the morning, and I come across this ad on Facebook, and this guy is, you know, I've never seen this name before, this guy is selling black rams. So he's got a bunch of different things for sale, he's got like, he had three black rams, one German blue ram, one Bolivian ram, one two gold rams, it was like this whole, I don't know, licorice all sorts of rams that he had. So it was super puzzling to me because for the longest time, like I live in Australia, and I have never seen black rams available, not once. I haven't been to a single aquarium store and seen them. I haven't seen them on a wholesale list. Now, there's no import laws on rams. You can import rams, so that's not what's stopping it. I think just no one really has them. People have got them in, and I'm sure that there's quite a few of you guys who are watching that have black rams, but I haven't seen them. So I was really, really puzzled, and I quickly messaged this guy, and I said, look, I'm only interested really in the black rams because I breed fish. I've got no use for one German ram or one Bolivian ram, you know what I mean? Like, there's absolutely no use in that for me. So I was interested in the black rams and it was a male and a female, you know, I was willing to pay a good price for them. And I messaged him and he said, you know, he was like an hour's drive from me. And uh, I was like, okay, how much do you want from me? He says like, you know, a price. And I said, well, I'm not really interested in that. He said, well, that's the price. I'm trying to get rid of all of them. So if you want to take them all, I'll do it for this price. And I was thinking, Okay, you know, if I can get these guys to breed, it's all worth it. Now, there was a few things that were going through my head. The first of these things that was going through my head was normally German rams, the way they breed, or I mean, just rams in general, is you, you know, raise up a bunch of juveniles and then you get a pair or you get a few pairs and they pair off normally like angelfish. They're not quite the same. They're a little bit less staying with one mate, but they will normally pair off and they'll choose a pair and then, you know, they'll raise up their eggs and all that kind of stuff. So I was thinking, what if these guys aren't a pair, you know, I'll just waste my money because then I'll just have two black rams that aren't breeding. I'll have a bunch of random rams that I can't breed because there's no males and female pairs. And basically that was the risk I was running. So, and I just decided, let's just go drive there, have a look. It's only an hour. You know, I don't have to buy them and we'll see what there is available. Okay, so I drove there and you know, I rock up, I rock up on time, I've got cash and all that kind of stuff. And I turn up, I go there, the guy's fishing all the fish out, which is fine. He's got them in like a bucket. I'm expecting to have a look at these fish, obviously. So I go to have a look and there was actually three black rams and there was just a bunch of other stuff. And I had a look at the black rams and I look at them up and he's got them like in a bucket. So I'm looking at them from the top and I'm not the kind of guy that's just gonna look at them from the top. I wanna look at them from the sides and all that kind of stuff because from the photos, I had no clue whether these guys were actually black rams. They could have just been German blue rams and they could have been called black rams. So I have a look at them from the top. I mean, they look like black rams. And then I get them like in a cup and I have a look at them from the side and I go, I look at one and it's like a male and I'm like, oh yeah, that's all right. A little bit skinny, but it'll be okay. So I put him back in the bag. I take the female out, I go, same thing. Oh, it's a little bit skinny. This one's got its fins nipped. So the female had its fins nipped. I'm like, oh not really passing my criteria for what I want to buy when I buy a fish. And I pull up the third one and it's just so skinny. It's had internal parasites, it's had pretty much every disease under the sun. These fish were not in good condition at all. So of course I go, look, I'm interested in the two healthy-ish ones. They just had their, you know, fins nipped and stuff like that. They weren't looking too flash. And I go, 
can I just buy these? And he goes, well, I'm gonna have other people that are coming. Are they gonna take all of them? I just wanna empty out the tank and I go, all right, well, can you do them for this price? Because, you know, they're sick, there's this, this and that, you know, you're trying to get rid of them and he goes, nah, I'm not negotiating. So I go, well, if I don't buy these, I miss out on black ramps, I don't get the chance to breed them. This guy, we'll just sell them to the next guy that comes and has the same idea as me. So I go, look, you know, whatever, I'll take them. Take them home and I put them all in the tank. This tank actually behind me where <laughs> one of the black rams is right now. Put them in the tank behind me. The problems kept coming. So put them in there, have a look at them. Yeah, they're a mess. Like it was not good at all. So what I did was I hit them with a dewormer, hit them with trisulfur to help external fungal things, bacterial things, white spot remedy, pretty much every kind of medication under the sun. Took about a week, but we got them into pretty good condition and actually in fact, too good of condition because the male started trying to breed. So I was sitting here, I was going, okay, good. Well, we've got the fish now. I'm gonna wait until I get into this new fish room and I can start to try and breed these guys. Well, little did I know this male who was in breeding condition, he wanted to go, he was keen. He started fighting with one of the gold males, like the gold ram males in the tank. I came down one morning to make my coffee. I come and have a look at the tanks every morning and I come in and I like notice something's a bit strange and I look at him and his whole entire eye is popped out. Like, we've got pop eye, but it's only in one eye. So I knew that this was definitely not disease. This was an attack. He's been bitten, you know, in a fight or something like that. And what's happened is the fluid behind his eyes pushed it out and I've got to get all the other fish out of here as quick as possible before it gets worse. I've got to treat him with more antibacterials just to make sure it doesn't get infected and you know, it could be lethal. So that brings me on to the next part of the story. So what I do is I take all of the fish out of the tank and I just leave him in there with the female. Now, you guys might be thinking, look, why wouldn't you just separate the male? Firstly, I'm completely out of tank space. I have not a single tank that I could put him in and it just didn't work logistically. So that wasn't an option. Second reason is something that I like to call an emergency spawn. Now, when we have species that are rare and something that we have spent a lot of money on. One of the favorite things I have when I'm breeding fish is I need to get my generation of fish. So what that means is I like to breed a fish, get the babies to grow up and then breed the babies as my breeding stock because those fish have been raised in my tap water, under my care, they know me and they're generally a lot more sturdy and healthy fish. So that's my plan and what an emergency spawn is, is we're scared of you know losing this male to a fatal bacterial disease or something like that and what we're trying to do is just get fry because if I can get fry I can raise the fry up breed them and then we don't have to worry about it because I only have one black ram male now yes I could have bred him with another fish like another German blue ram or like the female with a blue ram or something like that and you know gotten some black genes out of it but I want as pure genes as possible so we entered into what I call emergency spawn mode so we took all of the fish out of this tank left this male in here with his female, and the first thing I did was add a ton of driftwood. Second thing I did was add some rocks, because I thought they were gonna spawn on these rocks, and I just pummeled these guys with live blackworms, like an unbelievable amount of live blackworms. Now, what the live blackworms do is they add a constant food source, because you guys can see, there's blackworms down the bottom, so they can eat whenever they're hungry, they can get super fat, and also because they're live, they normally trigger some spawning and breeding behavior. Now the driftwood was in here to buffer the water and to bring the pH up, I mean no, the pH down, and to make them feel like, you know, it's the rainy season, there's tons of tannin in the water, it's really acidic, and it's all dark, and there was plenty of spaces for the female or the male likewise to hide and get out of clear sight of each other. So that's the first thing we did. Now the main thing that I tried to do was to lower the TDS in the water because the water in my area has a very, very high TDS. In fact, it's about you know over 100 when it comes out of the tap. So the way I normally do this is you either use RO water or rainwater. So I've got a rain tank outside and I just started doing daily water changes in this tank. And soon enough, the female started to get really, really fat and she got into breeding mode and she got a really, really fat, she was full of eggs and I come back home one day and they've spawned. So I was super excited. I actually put it on my Instagram story because they bred. I was like, yes, finally got my spawn. You know, it took about a week and I'm gonna have babies and it's all gonna be good. Well, I take the babies out and I put them in here. Now, this is just a little temporary incubator with a heater and an air stone. 
And this was going to be my hatchery because there was no way I was letting them learn how to be parents on my emergency spawn. I was just going to go take the eggs out and make sure that I got some fry. So I wasn't going to let them play around and, you know, eat their first couple of spawns unneeded fry ASAP in case these guys decided not to pair off. Because what rams can do sometimes is what they'll do is they'll have a couple of spawns and then the male or the female will decide, look, I don't like this guy and they'll just leave each other and they'll stop spawning forever or they'll attack each other and kill each other. Now, black rams are one of the most aggressive rams apparently in the fish keeping world and these guys, they're prone and they're known for killing each other when they're spawning. So that was not something I was too keen on doing. So I took the eggs out, I come back down the next morning and they have all fungused up. The male did not fertilize the eggs at all. This guy here, what a jerk. Basically I was a bit bummed and I go, all right, well, I'm just gonna try again. I'll try and get another spawn. But this is where the, the story really thickens. This guy thinks that the female has eaten the eggs because I've taken the eggs out. So, you know, that's not something I normally recommend when breeding species like this. So this guy here, he thinks the female has, you know, done him a dirty and taken the eggs and he is super, super mad, like really mad. And I'm trying to look for the female, I can't find her. And she's up in one of the top corners up here hiding and he's just going ham, he's super rage and they're attacking all morning and yeah, he wasn't happy. So I was about to take the female out, but I go, Look, I'm just gonna leave her in here. We'll just see how it goes. Luckily enough, she and him came around and he settled down, he wasn't as mad. They sorted things out and it was a week later, she was fat again and they spawned again. So what we have, we now have our first batch of eggs. Now you guys can see the screen. They're wiggling a little, so they have hatched and I will be able to get these guys up to fry, but we have a spawn, so a successful spawn. So we have our emergency spawn. Now, obviously I have to raise these guys up and uh, get them to you know, maturity. And there's a lot of work left ahead of me, but we have bred the rams successfully. So sigh of relief, it's happened. I can breathe easily once more and I will have black rams available in the future and uh, hopefully some Dark Knight Rams because what the deal is with these guys is basically they don't breed true. So there'll be a few of them that come out and there'll be Dark Knight Rams or Black Rams and then the rest will be kind of like this guy you can see in front of me. So hopefully he's got some good genes in him and I'll be able to get a couple of really good looking fish out of his batch. But the story doesn't end here. <laughs> basically the same exact thing had happened this morning. So they spawned two days ago and he thinks that the female keeps eating his eggs and he wasn't letting the female come near the spawn this time when they spawned. So he was doing all the parenting and when I came and took the eggs out and he was mad. So he was way, way more mad than he was last time and he attacked the female and I found the female up in one of the top corners here. And she's all right, we'll go have a look at her now. So we come over to this dirty tank which has all of the assorted fish. There's some leopard frog plecos and stuff like that. There's one of the gold rams up the back there. And the black ram female is in here somewhere. And there she is. So she was super beaten up, you know. She had her fins nipped and she wasn't dead. She was far from being dead, but you can see right there on the screen, her fins are very nipped and she's not in the best condition. So I had to isolate her. I put her in this tank and she should, you know, shapen up and come all good. But basically that's the story. Uh, it's a long story, kind of a weird ending. We did get a successful spawn and we will have these guys in the future, but that's the story of how I got my black rams to breed. It wasn't hard, just a lot of rainwater, a lot of black worms. Yeah, they finally came around, but a very, very tricky fish to breed. And, you know, hopefully we can get a ton of these guys coming out in the near future. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.